What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Mongols Podcast. I'm Mike. He's Kev. Coming up on today's show, we'll recap the Hounds' home opener against Rochester. We'll talk about dropping River from the Hounds, and we'll preview our upcoming game against Harrisburg. Let's go! Can you believe that, guys? No, I mean, that is no, the craziest does. sequence of events we've seen in quite a period of time. In the top right corner, gentlemen. Out to the middle. Back to Kerr. All right, bear with me, Kev. I think I'm uh, I'm gonna have to go on a little rant here for for one minute. Um, so I attended the uh, the home opener this weekend. Um, overall, aside from the weather, which we'll get into on the rant, uh, it, was an, <laughs> it, it was it was a great time. Um, I had mentioned this out there on Twitter. Uh, I actually went with my wife. We were celebrating our 10 year anniversary. So. Um, big thanks to, to my wife. That's, yeah. yeah, I know. <laughs> big big thanks to my wife for saying, yes, I'd love to go with you to a soccer game when she knows very little about soccer to celebrate her <laughs> 10-year anniversary. Um, so basically, you know, the story behind, uh, you know, how I got there um, – and, and this sort of ties. By the way, I don't know how you swung that for a tenth anniversary with your wife, who doesn't really like. So, I mean, that's impressive. I don't know what you're doing to make up for that. Where you're doing dishes for a week or a month <laughs> or something, but that's because I. I mean, I know Riley. I couldn't get her near any kind it's, of sporting event. So it's a lifetime of dishes. Uh, trust me. <laughs> so, um, but so what happened was we left our house. We had big. It wasn't really big plans. The plan was we were going to leave our house around four thirty. Um, you know, our, my parents were coming over. They're going to watch the kids. We're going to leave the house at four thirty. We're going to head over to Piper's Pub, get something to eat, and then we're going to head down and tailgate with the Steel Army. You know, big thanks to Elizabeth and Josh. Um, they actually sent us an invite out on Twitter. Said, "Come on down, hang out with us." And we said, "Sure, let's go." Um, and so we left the house at four thirty. When we left the house at four thirty, the weather on my phone said, "Hey." There's like a 30% chance of rain in the 5 o'clock hour and a 50% chance of rain in the 6 o'clock hour. Otherwise, it's going to be clear skies. And I said, thanks, Yahoo. That's great. And so Well, there's your start... problem. You're using Yahoo. <laughs> it's, it's a nice app. I mean, I can't. I, whatever. Anyway, so we get in the car. We start driving, right? Um, and I feel bad. My wife started to feel off, uh, sickish. And so we said, okay, well, rather than stopping and you know eating some greasy food, let's just keep cruising. We'll just keep driving. Um, and, and, you know, see if you feel better. And, and she did, we ended up doing like the tour de Pittsburgh. We literally went all over the place from the South side, back to downtown, to Oakland, to Lawrenceville, to Bloomfield, to East Liberty. I mean, we were all over the place, literally. That was, that was my high so, school experience. That's all I did. Cause I mean, you just can't drive. do anything. Yeah. When you're in high school, you can't, so you just drive around Pittsburgh. You just drive. So anyway, we ended up uh, we ended up going uh, and we got down to the stadium and it was probably a little bit after six and we're like, okay, you know the we we knew that Highmark Stadium was open, um, that the bar was open, that there would probably be people in there, and we would just go in and we would hang out because it was it, it was pouring rain. And, uh, and so we got there at six and literally it just, the skies just opened and it was like, well, this is crummy. Um, so we really just sort of like hung out in the car, hoping for it to break at some point. It never broke. Um, so we finally said, okay, fine. We're heading in. Um, the, the steel army had already made their way in. So it's was like, well, crap, we can't, we can't catch up to the tailgate. So again, Josh and Elizabeth, sorry, I wasn't there. We were at the game. We just, because, you know, my wife wasn't feeling well and, and everything. I didn't want to push it 10 year anniversary, all of that. Um, we ended up getting in line right behind, um, some of the uh, some of the Rochester supporters, which was interesting, but we made our way in. It was packed, um, you know, literally shoulder to shoulder, which was fantastic to see. Um, if you watch the game online, it looked like there were a bunch of empty seats. There were some empty seats, but it was because most of the people were taking shelter from the rain. There were a lot of people at the game. The the parking lot was packed, which was fantastic. Um, but yeah, I mean, otherwise. I thought the entire experience was good aside from the rain. For some reason, every time I go to a Riverhounds game, it either is raining <laughs> right before the game starts or it starts raining during the Like, I'm starting to think that I'm the reason why it rains at the games and I just need to stop going. Um, or well, I, I mean, need to what? invest so, in, like... But, but Hunter said, you know, he prefers rain over wind, although it's, I think we got both in this game. <laughs> but Yeah, we got, a, we got a little bit of both. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I, either that or I just need to invest in some like really good waterproof like everything, like a jumpsuit, and just wear that to the games. Oh, I could help you with that. I got an, R- <laughs> I got, I got an REI next to where I live, and it's just, it's dangerous. I go in there yeah. all the time. And... But I mean, aside from the rain, you know, big ups to the Steel Army. They were loud 
all night consistently, um, which was fantastic to see. I'm sure that it was a huge boost for the team. Um, the Rochester supporters, they actually sent two groups, the Oak Street Brigade and the Flower City Stampede. They were there as well, and they were also loud. So, you know, kudos to them. Um, Highmark was giving away free scarves, which was awesome. We got a few free scarves, brought them back for the kids. Uh, I got my picture taken with ammo, which was... I. I, I was really excited about it. It's funny when you look at the picture, it doesn't look like Ammo's excited at all. Like his head's sort of down and it's like, you know, like I was this big disappointment. Um, clearly, you know, I, I, I just saw him standing, I saw him standing there and I was like, here, quick, get a picture with me. And I think it was like, ah, oh, here's this old guy who just wants it. There's no kids. Like this is lame. Um, but, you know, overall we had a really good time. Um, unfortunately, like I said, I was cashing in a lot of chips here because it was the 10th anniversary and all of that. So we ended up leaving at halftime because we were just soaked to the bones. And, you know, I really couldn't ask my wife to stay any longer. Um, I appreciated that she was there for as long as we were. Yeah, 45 was good. Yeah. 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 You know, um, it was a good time. We both had a really good time. It'll be a night that we're going to remember pretty much forever um like it or not but yeah. like like it or not it, it will remember it forever but uh actually it's funny because they um the hounds posted a, a picture on twitter they were giving away one of the rows they got uh free cookies from uh double tree hotels and uh, if you actually look at the picture and you look in the background like the the people sitting right in front of the p- press box I didn't even know they were taking the picture, but I'm cheesing it like I just won something. Like, I'm looking back <laughs> at the camera. So if you find that tweet and you want to see what I look like, just look for the guy that's just grinning from ear to ear uh, <laughs> right in front of the press box because that was me. Um, but overall, I, I had a lot of fun. Um, I, 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 I guess, yeah, now would be a decent time to explain why I wasn't there. I think the reason why I probably didn't bring it up earlier is because I'm – maybe slightly ashamed that I'm, I'm doing this podcast and not you living you know, in Pittsburgh and all this kind of stuff. But uh, so I actually live in Knoxville, Tennessee at the moment um, for work. And uh, but, you know, born and raised and grew up in Pittsburgh and love the city and, and love my soccer. And so always never too far away from it. And, and uh, yeah. Uh, and so, I, you know, I was able to watch the game on YouTube, which is actually really nice. Um, you know, they yeah, I'm sure they you stayed a lot drier than we did. Yeah. So, you know. Oh, it was great. I got, I got a beer. It was like... <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah. So, yeah, I asked my wife to send you some uh, some uh, uh, choice words along with some of the pictures of yeah, us. Yeah, she was too nice. What? <laughs> she was too nice not to put those choice words. I know. I she, know. Was, she was well more prepared than you are. She had the rain gear and everything, it looked like. She did. Thanks, honey. Um, anyway, uh, so, you know, overall, aside from the rain, I think, you know, the Hounds did everything they could to, to put on a good show. And I think that everybody there appreciated it. There were a number of kids right in front of us that were pumped regardless of what was coming down. That's good. So, uh, so good job, yeah. Um, so let's let's talk about the game itself. Um, you know, unfortunately, the Hounds ended up losing one nothing on a seventh minute seventh minute goal um, by Christian Valeski. Um, in terms of the takeaways, you know, for the game, uh, the first thing I just want to put out there is uh, we were wrong. Um, <laughs> I was standing under section one hundred five when they were announcing uh, the Hounds starting lineup. And when they announced that uh, Drew Russell uh, was starting it right back, I went, oh, we didn't call that one. Um, and then they mentioned that Marshall Hollingsworth was going to be in the midfield. And I was like, mm, we didn't call that one either. Um, and in my opinion, they turned out to be two of the best players for the Hounds. Yeah, so, uh, well. so so, spot on for them. Hollingsworth was all over the place, um, just using speed. And, and as I was there, sitting there for the first half, I was like, man, Drew Russell was killing it. Yeah. I mean, he was he was all over the place. He was shutting down plays. He was up and down the field. He was making dangerous crosses. He looked really good. Um, the other thing we got wrong is uh, if you go back and listen to our preview, we said, hey, uh, Grant Van de Castile uh, is someone that you should watch out for Rochester. Apparently, Rochester should watch out for Grant, <laughs> Grant Van de Castile as well because he's not even on the team. Um, <laughs> when we were setting up the preview, you know, we were looking at different places in the USL touted him as a player to watch so um you know if you would go to their preview they said hey you know this is a top guy to watch and if you go to rochester's website he's listed on their roster um so after doing a little bit more digging after the game i was like what happened here um it turned out that there was just one little blip in sb nation that we found where they just said he will not be returning to the team dot 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 and there was no reason given why like even if you go to his twitter account he doesn't mention anything about it so I think that's one of the things Kevin and I are going to do as, as much as we possibly can to bring you correct information about these teams and, and, and about what to expect. But 
one of the things, and, and one of the reasons why we're doing this is because of a lack of coverage in some cases um, and, and detailed coverage about what you can expect in these games. And this was a case where even Rochester's own website listed him on the roster, even though he's not. Um, and so I think just overall, we need to help to, to increase the relevance of the data that's out there about these players, about these teams. And, and, and I think um, that happens when you get more of a support for the entire league. I mean, when, when, when teams can actually say, you know, okay, ho- hold on, like fans are holding us accountable on this stuff. Um, so, you know, the, 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 more, the more the support for the USL grows, I think hopefully you get, you get situations like this happening. Uh, or situations like this happening less and less. Yeah, and so, you know, again, our apologies for that. Um, we're going to, you know, keep plugging away. And I think as, as we get more and more into the season, more and more of this is just going to become apparent because there's going to be more and more for Kevin and I to reference in terms of starting lineups and how teams are playing and all of that. We can go back and watch more and more games. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit when we get into the preview with uh, Harrisburg later. Um I guess one of my other, um, you know, takeaways from the game is that it seemed like we had a lot of possession, um, but we were still playing a lot of long balls at the end, which we were losing. Um, you know, there were a lot of times where we would have build up from the back, and and the Hounds talk about how we want to be a possession team. We want to play uh, entertaining football and keep the ball on the ground, but especially during that first half, we were still doing a lot of lobbing the ball up in the air. Um, and and hoping that we could bring it back down. And the problem was was that not only were we not winning the first ball, um, you know, when a player goes up to head it, we weren't winning the second ball either. And so we would just lose possession. And we did a better job in the second half. But Kev, you have something yeah, to say I've, about I, yes, that? Yes, I've been holding this back really for the entire what ten minutes or, or so that we've been. So it, it's it was a it was a mad mad game. And I remember watching the game, and, and for the first thirty minutes thinking like how like how am i going to talk about this like this is this is a it was for me it was a it was a really bad start from the hounds um and uh, and i wasn't looking forward to to talking about it it looked like league champions playing against a lower league side um yeah like you said we weren't winning first balls we weren't winning second balls i think Ro- rochester did a really good job of uh kind of congesting the midfield um knowing that especially with a formation like how we like to play um, that kind of naturally pushes us to maybe play a bit more narrow and kind of stay in the middle of the pitch. And uh, I mean, if you look, especially in those first 30 minutes, Rochester did a really good job. There was always at least three, three of their players around the ball, um, whether they were in or out of possession. Um, I thought they were really fit. They were all over the, all over the field and Riverhounds, I think came out just a bit more sluggish and, and, I, I don't know. I was, it it might have been just, you know, first game jitters, get that out of the way and things like that. But I think whereas the Hounds kind of took a bit longer to get going, um, Rochester was there immediately from, from the whistle. Um, but, uh, yeah, and so uh, – but, but so for the first 30 minutes, I was like, this is going to be a terrible podcast to talk about. After that, I was really impressed. And I was thinking, you know, with all the chances that we were getting, I was like, you know – for how bad we've been playing, it's nuts that we should be winning the game because of there was we would just get these kind of you know clear cut chances and and for whatever reason we just couldn't bury them. Um, so it, yeah, it was it was kind of a game of not two halves because I think we started playing well around the thirty thirtieth and thirty fifth minute, uh, but I think from from there on we really dominated the game. I mean it was it was a team that. You know, especially with their start, Rochester, we kind of assumed should be controlling the game in Boston game. I thought we did a really good job, and I think there's a lot of reason to be optimistic uh, uh, going forward. Um, now, would you say this is something that I that I noticed, um, and and it may have been misnoticed, but yes, we got a lot of chances in the second half. But a, a lot of times, when you see a team that plays a possession style, they will sort of work the ball from the back methodically up the field, and then they spend a certain amount of time in that final third. They're either knocking it around, or if they give it up, they get it back right away, and they sort of live in the other team's half. Um, it seems like when we were getting our chances, it was very much like, um, you know, we would get it from the back and, and the chance would happen almost out of nowhere. Like where, where we would work it up, we'd play good, and you would have this one shot and it would go off. And then if we'd miss it, it was right back into our half again. And, and we were doing a good job of controlling it, but it's not that 
possession, move it up the field, keep it there. It's like move it up the field and take the shot, and then and not not in right. the sense I of think, like actually shoot the ball, but like right. I I think I think soccer supporters in the modern age are, are maybe a bit spoiled, especially if they look at what's happening around the world. I mean, if you <laughs> look at like. Things that like Barcelona do, who they just keep the ball in their op- opposition's third forever. That's a really difficult thing to do. And, and some of the best teams in the world have a very difficult time just keeping the ball in the opposition's final third. So I, I'm not, I'm not really gonna knock. I think the Riverhounds for not keeping more possession in, like right in and around Rochester's box because it, it's very tough. I think the other thing is. Um, Usually you can you could you can have maybe a bit more easier time controlling controlling the ball in their half when when the, when the opposition drops really deep. I don't know. It, it seemed like when I was watching the game, Rochester was keeping a fairly high line. I mean, and and they were a pretty organized two banks of four. And so when when you're if you're gonna play a four four two, in, in my opinion, you want to try to squeeze the pitch down to a smaller. To a smaller area because if you don't, you can get these gaping holes in between your midfield four and your back four. So Rochester played it pretty well with, with kind of pushing that back four up the pitch a bit more and not dropping too deep. And so that just makes it a smaller area for the Riverhounds to work in. And so it was, I think, the combination of it being really difficult to keep possession in their third as well as Rochester doing a good job maybe holding a high line. I think that's probably why you don't didn't see the Hounds kind of toying with them around their box um, but I think yeah I mean as you said I think they did a really good job of making those kind of quick chances happen kind of kind of out of nowhere and I don't know yeah, I was I was I was shocked it, it was like a diff- it was watching a different team at 35 minutes we, we we got on the ball and we just started controlling it and it was it was fine you you would see it cycle it out to like the right back and you, you would kind of look at nothing's there let me just pass it back to the center back and I mean, that's fine. That's good. Just you can put your foot on the ball and get get some control of the game, and uh, and and chances immediately started coming from it. So, yeah, I, yeah I, I, not, I'd, I'd like to see a bit more of that. I think going forward, it, of it being okay, being patient, and just knocking the ball around for a while because we obviously have the players to do that and, and the players that want to do that. Yeah, and this was the first game of the season, so like and that, that's I, I another. And, I and it was it was rainy, there, it was but, windy, and yeah. it, I mean, so that's that was another thing I was thinking about. I was like, you know, I, I I'm being very critical here, and it is the fir- first game of the season, and the conditions were not good at all, and so no. yeah, it's it's probably fair <laughs> that, that yeah. this wasn't the case, um, but uh, but yeah. So before we get into the uh, you know the the, the positives, um, were there any other takeaways that you had sort of watching the game? Anything we haven't talked about yet? Um, before we get into the positives, yeah, sort of like you know the so the, negatives well, right now is what you're yes saying. yeah okay. yes ne- I was pretty negative the past <laughs> time. <Opposites. laughs> you were you were pretty negative. Let's, let's change uh, but, that but question. So, let's change the question. Do you have any positives about the game? Kevin? <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I said I think there's a there's a lot to be optimistic. I think going forward, I thought I, I was really um, I was really happy to see the the few brief moments of uh, Harley of Parks and I mean Herzog obviously. It should have scored probably three times, and so that could be frustrating when you know your striker isn't putting it in the back of the net. But the, but the fact that he's getting into those positions, he was picking up really good positions, and um, I, I, that's obviously really important. Um, so I, I think attacking, we have a lot to be optimistic about. And I mean, the hound shown from 35 minutes onward, we can play a possession game. We can do that, and we can do it successfully against the best team in in, in the league. So that was really optimistic as well, um, and and I actually, I mean, and on top of, I mean, really, it was it was a really good performance from thirty five. I thought defensively we were really good, and it was it was really kind of a shame that we let up that goal on the seventh minute when really it was it was a mistake if you kind of look back at it. I, I thought yeah. um, I thought Campbell played really well as well as Hunt. I thought yeah. both of them actually had a really strong game, and it was just kind of sad that Campbell kind of. You know, you it, he kind of stretches for the ball to kind of intercept it, and you can kind of forgive him for not getting there. But it's a ball that I, I would expect my center back to kind of collect and and yeah. and, and start pushing there up was, the pitch. 
And there was nothing Hunter could have done on that. I mean, he yeah, came off his no, line great and tried to play it, and it was yeah. it was a good finish. I mean, you it could tell really he was upset, finish. but yeah. you know, and we're not saying this because you know he's number one in our hearts, but uh, yeah. <laughs> what I mean, he but, made yeah. he made a really good save too in the second half, where the, I think someone just kind of like hit it on the half volley from like 20, 20 yards or something, and it was kind of dipping, and, and he made a really good save to push over the bar. Um, but uh, no, I mean, yeah, it was. I thought we were really dominant. Um, from 35 minutes on, but uh, it was, yeah. So I think I think if we can continue that kind of performance, you know, into the next game, as well as start betting in the new players, um, you know, I think there's there's a lot to be optimistic about. Um, we're let's let's talk a little bit about the the player of the game. So uh, Kevin Kerr was awarded the Cleveland Brothers Cat Blue Collar Player of the Game by the fans at the game itself. Um, Kev, if you had to pick a player of the game for the Hounds, who are you? Uh, who are you putting it on? I mean, it's. I don't think one player kind of stood head and shoulders above everyone else. Um, I was, as as I said before, I was actually really impressed with with Campbell and Hunt. I thought both of them looked pretty composed in the ball. I think another thing, I was actually really impressed with uh, with Green. Um, I expected him to be a bit more kind of offensive and Akai being the bit more defensive um but it kind of those roles were switched in my mind and green ended up being a bit more defensive and I thought he actually had a really good game I thought there was a couple moments when maybe he tried to push the envelope a a little bit too much and he would get caught in possession or something like that but um I thought he was very responsible at the back he always was there as an outlet pass and um and tracked back and and made some good kind of uh last stitch tackles um I thought the three of them played played really well, um, and then obviously there's I'm sure there are. I will second what you're about to say because I think I know what you're about to say. So, <laughs> so what I'm about to say is that uh, you know I, I mentioned earlier how we were wrong um, in terms of our predictions, and again it was it was all up in the air. But I thought that Drew Russell too hard had a yourself, really good Mike. game. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. So I thought Drew Russell had a really good game. Um, he really impressed me uh, on that right side. I thought he did an amazing job. He was making runs all game. His crosses were always dangerous. So I thought he did really well. And Marshall Hollingsworth. I mean, honestly, I didn't know what to expect from him. You know, when we talked about sort of the, the partnership with Columbus, I think we were we were hyping uh, Ben Swanson a little bit more, um, you know, thinking that he was sort of more on the cusp of, of breaking into the Columbus team um, and that, uh, you know, we may be seeing him more. And Hollingsworth really came out. There were a number of times, especially when we switched him to left back, that he would sort of start with the ball deep and instead of forcing the ball up the line, he would cut it inside. And, and, and this was something that we saw last year with Rochester, where they're so well organized and so structured that when you have somebody that's willing to take on one of their players and get past them, the team sort of collapses around him. And, and, and the number of times that he would start on the left and cut inside and beat his player, you would see all this space that he could run into. And then you start to see them collapsing. And so many of our opportunities and plays started because of that, of them losing their shape. So for me, really, I think he was he was the real standout in the game, at least in my mind. No, yeah, um, he played really well. I, th- I thought not only I think he had the legs to get around the pitch a lot, but yeah, he, he had the technical ability and the vision. And yeah, he, he looks like a really solid player. Yeah, and so um, you know one of, one of the things that we talked about in in one of our preseason primers as well is uh, the the origin of the name Mongols, um, and, and we said you know every time the ball goes in the river, we should. <laughs> donate something to charity or we should figure out what we're going to do and sitting at the game i think the ball went into the river like three times in the first 15 like, minutes yeah <laughs> and i'm, I'm sitting I was like, like i don't oh, i don't have crap. this kind of cash like, mike <laughs> I <can't do> <laughs> like it's, so, it's great it's a good purpose but i can't I can't do this all season yeah, and, and so here's the thing. You know, at one point, Kevin Kurt drilled one off a train, um, and I think it actually, like, stuck on the train, which is awesome. Like, whenever that train reaches its destination, it's going to have a USL ball stuck to the side of it. Um, you know, we we said, like, if the ball gets in the river, the problem is is that we're never actually going to know if the ball makes it in the river. It's just got to go over the fence. So I think what we need to do is, Kev, you and I need to sit down and really brainstorm, like, okay, um, you know, what is it that we're going to donate? What charity are we going to donate to? You know, is it something where if it just goes over once a game, then we just donate for that game? Or do we do it every time it goes over? You know, could we potentially find somebody out there that's willing to match whatever we put in? So if we say it's like, 
you know, five dollars a ball or something like that. Right. You know, if we get somebody else to match, that's that's pretty huge, especially yeah, since cool. we had like three in this first game. Right. So, if anybody listening has any ideas out there in terms of um, really good charities, uh, you know, maybe that 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 revolve around soccer, you know, we're going to do some digging. But if you have any ideas, feel free to hit us up. Um, you know, you can find us on Twitter. You can find us, you know, email us howl at mongols.com. Um, we're going to start collecting a bunch of stuff. And if anybody knows any companies that want to match, let us know. We'll, we'll work with them as well. Um, you know, so obviously we lost. I, I, I guess we can, we could follow up with all that kind of stuff maybe on the next podcast and kind of evolve this idea. Cause I don't want it to make it sound like we're kind of copping out like, ah, oh, crap, we didn't think we'd have to pay for this. <laughs> like we oh, want yeah, no. this is something that we want to do. And I think it's a really kind of positive idea, but, um, but yeah, and to, so. to hold to hold our feet to the fire, I'm gonna add a page to the website that keeps track of how many times. Um, and I think idea. we got three for this game. So if anybody saw it differently, feel free to let us know. Um, yeah. And uh, and so maybe we'll add like times on there too. I'll go back and watch the game and, and break it down. But um, so obviously we lost. It's it's not an ideal situation for a home opener. But like we said, there's a lot of positives that came from it. Um, we will see the Rhinos two more times this year, uh, both of them in Rochester, June 25th and then August 20th. So really less than 30 days apart. So that'll be interesting. You know, we'll both be much further along in our season. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. That's not 30 days apart. I'm talking June and August. I was thinking July and August. Man, I'm just, I'm off. Anyway, um, I think that pretty much does it for this game. Um, you know, lots of positives. Uh, it was good to get out there and play a pro team rather than a college team. Um, you know, the Hounds are back. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and take a break. And uh, when we come back, we'll talk about the hounds without the river. We'd love to hear from you. Find us on Twitter at Mongols, on Facebook at Mongols, and email us at howlatmongols.com. Any questions, comments, or reactions read on air could win you your own Riverhounds jersey. Thanks! And we're back. Um, So... Uh, Kev, I mentioned, you know, hounds without the river. Um, I had read somewhere that, uh, you know, the hounds have a new marketing team. And, and, and one of the things that they may be pushing is this idea of just branding the team as the hounds, um, not the river hounds, just the hounds. And, and that was one of the things that I noticed when I was in the team store. And, and I think it's been this way for a few years where most of the merchandise just says hounds. And, you know, I thought like, okay, you know, it's just a nickname. But I noticed today, um, and I actually went and tweeted about it, that if you go to the Riverhounds website, on certain pages, it will have the Riverhounds logo. And then next to the logo, it actually just says Pittsburgh Hounds. There's no river in front of it. Um, and so obviously, you know, we've been this team, we've been around, it feels like forever. It hasn't been forever, but we've always been the Riverhounds. What are your thoughts in terms of, of a branding, in terms of, you know, just feelings about the team if it's just hounds instead of river hounds yeah i'm a little torn um i think obviously hounds rolls off the tongue better and and i think you know often even in this podcast we'll just call them the hounds we and and so but at the same time you know it there's this kind of nice local community cultural connection by keeping the river in front of it i mean obviously pittsburgher Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh is very defined by by the rivers, especially the stadium being right on the river. You know, the ball goes in the river. Um, you know, I kind of like that. But, you know, at, at the same time, you know, it's not the Allegheny Pirates or the Allegheny <laughs> Steelers. Um, you know, it's... Yeah, no, it's yeah, a fair I, point. No, it, you're right. And, 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 and yeah, I, I don't know. And so it, I, I don't... Th- I think the important thing is I'm not... I don't feel that strongly in either direction. So it's not like this is a terrible decision. I, th- I love the Riverhounds name much more than the Hounds or vice versa. Um, so, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, if if they do change it to the Hounds, I think it'd be fine. Um, but I don't know. There, I think there is something I, I kind of like about the River being part of it because you're looking at it all game. But, you know, yeah. <laughs> For me, for me, just calling it hounds feels more European. Um, I don't know why that is. I mean, maybe that's just my you know love of Sherlock Holmes and hounds of the Baskervilles, <laughs> which that's that seems very very specific. Um, but I think I think that just in general, you know, there's not a lot of places that could call their team the River Hounds. Um, yeah, and I point. think that even in Pittsburgh, I think even in Pittsburgh, when people go river hounds, you know, it's kind of like, what does that mean? Um, you know, we don't actually have dogs that live in the river. Right. I think hounds is much more general. And I guess the, 
and maybe you don't have an answer to this, but say that you went to you know uh, your your girlfriend and said, hey, you know, um, we're gonna go see a River Hounds game, or you said, hey, we're gonna go see a Hounds game. Do you think that she would give you a reaction one way or another based on the name itself? <laughs> I mean, yeah, just just you saying that. Yeah, Hounds sounds a bit more professional, I think. Um, but uh, and yeah, no, I I have seen that reaction before where it's like river hounds and yeah you get that look like what like i've never heard of that before um so yeah no i i think hounds probably gets taken a bit more seriously um but yeah i don't know i, I don't know yeah i don't, I don't know yeah, i'm i i guess i'm leaning more towards i i like hounds uh, uh nod to the tradition of it being river hounds um but you know obviously with the USL, things are changing, things are growing. They're talking about, you know, increasing the minimum number of seats that you have in your stadiums. And so we really need to keep up in terms of filling seats. Um, you know, there's some teams that just came in this year that are selling out, you know, stadiums that are bigger than ours. And, you know, you look at the game the other day and there's a bunch of empty seats. So we got to try some some different things to to fill those seats. So I'm not, a, I'm not opposed to using hounds. And again, I haven't heard anything about, you know, we're the hounds now or, and I don't know if there will be that sort of thing, but um, just something that I noticed that I thought was interesting that up until now it's been around and, and it may have just been something that's in conjunction with their new website, which I don't know if you've gone and taken a look, but their new website is brand sparkling spanking new and it looks really, really good. Nice. Um, yeah. A lot of uh, uh, current information on there, unlike Rochester's. So uh <laughs> I think I think the important thing is at the end of the day, you know, we want to see a good soccer team out on the pitch. That's that's really what the most important thing is. We want to go there. We want to see a good game and and all that kind of stuff. And as long as they get that sorted, yeah, they can call. It, I don't. They can call it whatever. Really, I don't. But it's, yeah, I just I want to go and support. You know, a, a, my you know my local team and and uh, and go see a good yeah, match. Yeah, I agree. And you know, talking about some nonsense names, let's get into the preview against the Harrisburg City Islanders, which uh yeah. Uh <laughs> lots to talk about that. Yeah. That's, so that doesn't Yeah. Make sense. Yeah. Anyway, so so Harrisburg <laughs> comes to town. We we we're, we're going to beat up on them a little bit, but we don't want to beat up on them too much. Harrisburg comes to town this weekend. Um you know, they're they're basically coming off of back-to-back losses. Uh, they lost to the Richmond Kickers on March 26th. Um 3 to 1. And then just the other day, they lost to Charlotte Independence two to one. Um, you know, even though we lost this game, we're still third from the bottom in the Eastern Conference. Harrisburg is at the bottom, um, so you know this may be a good opportunity for us to sort of get off the Schneid a little bit, um, put some goals in the back of the net, and and get the first win of the season this weekend. But you know, one of the things is that. We shouldn't take them lightly. If you look back in their history, there are only three times um, in their entire history where they haven't made the playoffs, um, last year being one of those times. The other two times when they didn't make the playoffs, they bounced back the following seasons and either won the league or they made it to the finals. So like I said, last year they didn't make the playoffs, but they made it to the finals the year before. So they're not that far removed from being a really good team. Um so yeah, this will be their uh, their third game of a four game road trip, um, and it'll be the first game of the Keystone uh, Derby Cup. Derby, Derby. How, how do you how do you pronounce it, Kevin? I say Derby, um, but you know, it's yeah. This is it, I don't know. So I mean, so I, I say I say Derby, and that that's an ever, like even that's a, that's an English like way to say it but in a very american accent way like i can't say like so you know i'm a liverpool supporter i hear them say but and talking about the derby all the time they how they say it is still different but i'm still kind of using their way of saying it so i say derby derby but derby dirt derby 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 yeah harry potter <laughs> harry potter mustn't go to hogwarts derby. Um, if somebody, you know, obviously, uh, if somebody who was more closely involved with it, like someone from the Steel Army wants to let us know how they pronounce it, we will adopt that moving forward. But I know there's, yeah, this definitely. is a point of contention amongst a lot of different podcasts. Is it a Darby? Is it a Derby? I don't think anybody's actually said Dolby, which, you know, if we really want to go out there, we could say we're putting our, our flag at it's Dolby. We're calling it Dolby. Yeah. Um, but that just makes the R silent. So that's kind of like that. Yeah, actually. it's silly. Anyway, um, so <laughs> the this will be the first game of the Keystone uh, Derby Cup. 
Um, I just slipped right through that. Um, <laughs> where, you know, what what that is, it's basically awarded to the team. Um, right now it's between us and Harrisburg with the best head-to-head record during the regular season. So last year was the inaugural year for it. And the Hounds won it last year. Um, we basically won three out of the four games we played against Harrisburg. Um, one was a 5-2 win to start the season. Then we had that barn burner, that 6-5 to five win, which was the highest scoring game in the USL last year. Uh, our opening <laughs> grabbed a number of audio drops from that, just from the excitement, because it was such an amazing <laughs> game. Then we lost 3-4, to four, and then we went 2-1 to one on the road to clinch it. There was a number of uh, Steel Army members there to help celebrate, which is fantastic. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think, I think one of the interesting things from that is we played them four times and over those four times we scored 16 goals uh, which is an average of four per game so but it is still weird like because like you said you know when they're on these kind of peaks and troughs you know in their year they're a really good side so it's i I don't know what to expect from this one yeah I, i Goals. That's what I can goals. I mean, that's that's what I'm exactly saying. goals. Um, you know, they've already given up five goals in two games this year, so you know, hopefully, we can use that to our advantage and and, and put some in the back of the net. Um, it shouldn't be a defensive shutdown sort of game like we saw this past week. Um, so, yeah, um, you know, we, we last year we played them four times. This year we're only going to play them three times. Um, so we're going to play them this upcoming weekend. We'll play them July 4th in Pittsburgh, which is going to be a huge game. Um, Kevin, I think actually you and I will be getting back from vacation around that time. We should like pencil that in and go to that game. Cause that's going to be a blast. Um, and then we'll finish up the series August 27th in Harrisburg. So hopefully we can win this weekend. We can put the nail in the coffin on July 4th and then August 27th, we just go and, Maybe we'll get the trophy on the fourth, too. That would be awesome if, like, we win it and they're just like, <laughs> here, like, we don't even need to play the third game. Just take the trophy. We, you know, that would be great. Um, but I guess in terms of specifics about the team, you know, we, we talked a little bit about the history here. Um, Kev, you want to talk about sort of their formation a little bit and how, you know, we may fall into to some advantages with that? Yeah, so similarly to Rochester, um, it looks like Harrisburg plays four four two. Um, they did in their game this weekend against Charlotte. Um, so, I mean, just formation-wise, I think, you know, when the Hounds got on the ball and actually started playing their, 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 the style that they want to, I, I think the, our kind of formation matched up very nicely against Rochester's 4-4-2, and I, I would hope to expect the same uh, in this case as well. Um, uh, there's something here, Craig... Craig Foster, Jamaican, got his first start uh, for them up top and scored this weekend only three minutes into the game. Uh, so I guess similar to our game. Yeah, he, he uh, it was a great individual effort. But, uh, yeah, big shoulders, physical guy, kind of bullied his way through the box and, and got a clear shot. Yeah, it's it's uh, funny. He, so. he reminded me of uh, – so the youth team that I coach, I coach a, a U10 team and a U6 team, and, and I got a new player. I got a few new players on the U10 team. And, you know, some of the kids – you see somebody who just sort of like they get the ball and they have this nose for goal and they will nece- they will basically run through you over you around you to get to the goal um they're not that their first thought isn't like you know don't pass but they just have this sense of like i get the ball i'm going for goal and that's what that's what craig's goal looked like I mean, he basically got the ball and he had a number of people to beat and he was just like, I'm going to dribble it around you through the box and just rip a shot. And it went in. Honestly, I think those those are the best strikers. I mean, I think the best strikers have a level of arrogance and almost cockiness about them. I mean, they kind of have to, when they're in a situation where it's either a pass you know, and put someone else clean through or shoot, you want your striker to just, no, 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 I'm going to back myself and this is going in the back of the yeah. net. Um, they're unlike, I think, a lot of other players in the field in that, in that instance. Um, so I guess, yeah, I mean, something something to absolutely look out for with a striker, that kind of confidence. And Yeah, and I, confidence. I guess in terms of other players to watch, um, you know, they didn't have anybody that was sort of all USL team last year. Uh, last year was very much a rebuilding year for them. Like I said, they didn't make the playoffs. Um, and so, you know, I guess two of the guys to, to really keep an eye out for, um, Jose Barril, who plays outside midfield for them. This is his third season with the club. He was a Real Madrid product. Yes, that Real Madrid. Um, so, you know, he has some, some skills. Um, and then also, uh, Nick Noble, who is their goalie. 
Um, he's He's been with them for a little while. He was all-league second team in 2013. Um, and last year he had nine shutouts and a 1.89 goals against average. So the 1.89 is is pretty decent, um, but it's also indicative of the fact that, you know, you can put some balls behind him, which obviously we're going to strive to do. Um, Kev, uh, you know, how do you see this game playing out? I mean, I, I think we've sh- we showed enough, and especially in the second half against our, our home opener, um, to think that I think we're going to be confident going forward. Even though we didn't score any goals, I think we created a lot of chances. And uh, just that extra week of the, of the players kind of being together and getting to know each other, I think hopefully the, the attacking um, force uh, just kind of starts starts to click in this game. Um, so that, I mean, and, but at, and, and once again, I don't really see us letting in too many goals. I thought we were pretty, pretty stout at the back. It's pretty much I'm saying we're going to win the league, but because <laughs> <laughs> when you have a great when you have a great attacking for it and you have a great defense, of course you can win the league. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, and especially <clears throat> especially with Harrisburg kind of losing their first two games, you know, I think that we we can be as confident as you can realistically be going into this game. Right. I think. Yeah, and I think there's going to be some. I mean, they they're obviously down two games. They're going to be desperate to get a win, um, but. In addition to that, because of you know the cup that's in contention as well, that's going to be even more incentive for them to come out and try to get a win. So, again, I, I don't think we should take them lightly. I think it's very easy to look at the score sheet and say, well, they've already lost two games. They're bottom of the Eastern Conference. They've let in five goals so far, or however many it is, and say that we're just going to walk in and walk all over them. But that's not the mentality we should have. That's, that's a really good point, too, because I think – especially when there gets to this kind of locality, you know, local rival rivalry derby games, you know, the the famous kind of saying is, you know, form goes out the window in these kind of games. It doesn't matter if you've lost 5 games on the bounce or have won the past 5 games, you know, when it's kind of a local rivalry derby game, it, all bets are off and it, it's pretty much clean slate and everyone kind of goes in, you know, with a with a big heart, hopefully. Um, but uh yeah. So it pretty much just nullifies everything I said about being. <laughs> I mean, no, it doesn't. But like, but you know, you know. Let's let's stand you, on let's stand on both sides of the fence, Kev. Let's do that. Um, <laughs> you can hi, you can high five yourself on both sides. Um, <laughs> all right. So here, I'm gonna I'm gonna nail you down. Now you got to pick a side. Um, give me your score prediction. Uh, I'm I'm gonna go three one, three one or yeah, three one hounds. I should say. Kev says three one hounds. Three I'm, one. I'm writing that down right now, and we will add it to the website. Obviously, well, okay. So, but before before we get to your prediction, I guess yeah. How do we know who won last week? Oh, so neither you said two nil. I said two one. Neither of us won last week. I uh, basically the. I mean, yeah, but I got that they they scored a goal, right? I mean, so no, 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 no. That's no. that's how. It no, works. no, that's not how it works. <laughs> so the way it's gonna work for those of you keeping score at home is um, if you pick the right team to win, you get one point. If you pick the correct score line, you get three points. Um, so we both are sitting. So who's going to be the villain we- first <laughs> in this season? Who's going to pick a non-Hounds win is the question. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the question. Yeah, that'll be interesting. I'm not going to do it this weekend. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So you pick you pick three one hounds um, three one three honestly one. so the I th- what's interesting is uh, you know what did I say their last two games um, they basically had three one they lost and two one they lost so they put one away both times the goal that they scored against Charlotte there was a lot of standing around by Charlotte's defenders uh, which I don't see us doing I don't see us giving them the opportunity to get that shot. At the same time, if I look back at, you know, the games that we played last season, 5-2, 6-5, 3-4, 2-1, um, they're going to come hungry. So part of me wants to call a, like, 4 nothing blowout for the Hounds, um, but, I, ugh. you know, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to say 4 nothing Hounds. I'm, I'm going to say that we keep, we like keep a clean sheet. Back yourself. Yeah, I'm gonna back myself. Um, four, four nothing hounds. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, check yourself. Uh, four nothing hounds. Um, yeah, I'm calling my shot. That's it. Four nothing hounds. So, right. um, so I hope you're right. I hope I'm right too, because uh, yeah, we'll we'll see what happens. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's that's pretty much 
it uh, for this show. You want to do a prediction? Prediction starting lineup. Prediction starting lineup. Ooh, ooh. Uh, prediction starting lineup. Ooh. Um, I, I would go with the same back four. I didn't see any reason to switch away from that. I agree. I think I, uh, I think yeah. that went well. Um, I think I think you keep. Well, okay. Hold on now. Do you uh, do you do you start Hollingsworth at left back though, or do you or do you keep him in midfield? I like. Uh, he hmm. said. At, no, I like keep. I like keeping him in midfield. After actually. the game, he said he felt more comfortable at left back. Um, I personally liked him in midfield because I thought he was much more dangerous. Um, but uh, yeah, I think. That's yeah. I mean, but like, but I, th- I thought both fullbacks had a really good game. I did game. too. So that it'd, it'd be tough to kind of yeah put put one of them on the bench. So. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Okay, so let's say okay, we keep the same back four. And Hunter gets to start again. Um, we keep the same back four. Yeah. I think you keep you keep Green and Okai. In my mind, I think I think maybe. Mm, See, this is this is where I I think I start to defer. I, I think I think Green showed enough for me. Uh, defensively, that we could potentially be a bit more ambitious uh, going forward. And I think, although I thought Akai had a, a pretty decent game against uh, Rochester, I think we can even maybe gamble a bit more and even put Kerr back there. Um, and I like that for idea. Me, I'm just trying to maybe free up some space because if I'm putting Hollingsworth in, the, in that front three, I, I actually want to see a bit of Harley. Um, he came on at the end of the Rochester game and I think his first touch was like just really nice. He went by one player and just had a great layoff to another Hound player. Um, so I, I would want to see maybe Green, Kerr, Hollingsworth, Harley, and I guess Maloto in, in that kind of mid five. That's, I mean, it, it's a pretty I think, optim like positive, uh, positive midfield. Uh, well, and and there were some games that we watched last year. I, I shouldn't say some games. There was one game in particular. Um, where Rob Vincent was off for, I think it was a yellow card accumulation. And we started Kerr in that sort of defensive midfielder role. And, and you and I, this never made it to air, but this was one of the shows that Kevin and I covered and we talked about. And we were really impressed with having Kerr in that defensive midfield position because that allowed him to just sort of sneakily move between the lines and find that space that otherwise, you know, especially in this game, he started out on the left and then he switched over to the right and then he's back to the left and then we moved him into the middle um, towards the end of the game. I think starting him in that position, if if we feel that Green is really locking it down, um, I think having Kerr there, especially towards the end of the game, Kerr was dropping all the way back to the defensive line to pick yeah. up the ball. I, I, I would be intrigued to see him start in that position and really sort of run the yeah. attack from there and just sort of see what happens. Um so that's interesting. That's interesting. You bring and I think, up. like like we've said before, I think one of Kerr's best abilities is arriving late. I think he knows he knows where to be, when to be. He's not necessarily there all the time. I think there there was one where I think Russell put in a really good ball um, from the right side, and Kerr just found himself in the box with like no one marking yeah, he, him. It was great. He just put him. it he over the a, bar. Good, yeah. Yeah. Or no, I think he had a header. And oh, you're thinking I, the other one. Okay, yeah, yeah he had two. Yeah, yeah. He had two. Yeah, he had a, he had a header where he kind of headed it down yeah. away. So I think I think that potentially encourages that this kind of arriving late if he kind of sits in that back too. And uh, if it, and I thought and, and anyway and in finishing up top, I thought we saw enough of Herzog that I I, I want to see more of what he can do because yeah. um, I thought he was really positive in the second yeah, half. Yeah, I agree. Okay, well, um, I think that's it for this show. Um, I guess one last thing. Do you like the jerseys? I thought jerseys look good. I really I th- do. I think they look they really look good. good. I think they look really. I almost don't. I'm interested to see what I was the yellow. Say, I almost don't want to wear like, the yellow but, now, uh, like because the blue looks so good. Like it just, uh, <laughs> yeah. I uh, yeah. The entire kit looks really good with, with the socks and the shorts. It does. Yeah, it looks. It does. Good. And hey, that's a reminder. You know, if if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, uh, feel free to hit us up on Twitter. Um, if we read them on the air, you will be entered to win a jersey. Um, you know, we got the, the invite 
and uh, both you know Josh and Elizabeth were both sending us some stuff, uh, which is fantastic. We will put their names into the hat, so keep the good stuff coming. Um, Elizabeth had a nice little tweet about you know the rhino being much more like a unicorn, which I, I thoroughly appreciated. Um, that's overweight, a unicorn. That's yes, overweight. it was, that's, it was that's an overweight unicorn. So, um, <laughs> so good on. And I think it would have been a lot more satisfying to read that out if if we if, beat if we won. So yes, we feel a little bit bad reading that after yeah. a loss. So, but thank you, Elizabeth. That was great. Keep the good stuff coming. Um, spread laugh. the word. Yes, made us laugh. Like we said, make us laugh. Um, so again, you can follow us on Twitter. We're at Mongols. Um, you can email us howl at mongols.com. We're also on Facebook. Um, we're all over the place. Um, we're working on some potential interviews coming up here. So once we know who we're talking to, we will uh, we'll let people know. If you have questions that you want us to ask on air, send them our way. If there's somebody you, you particularly want us to talk to, let us know and we'll put the feelers out and see if we can get them on the air. Um, but otherwise, I think that's it. Kev, uh, anything else? I, I got nothing. Awesome. All right. Well, for uh, for Kev, I am Mike. Have a uh, have a good week. Get ready for Harrisburg. Get yourself to the game, and uh, we will talk to you very very soon. <laughs>